Coach EJ here. When inside someone's guard, the one thing you need to do before you can pass, advance, or submit is break the guard. Now what you can and cannot do depends on what sport you're training. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a variety of guard breaks for BJJ and MMA. Let's get to it. The first BJJ pass is the split pass. The first thing you need to do is posture up. We start by keeping our chest low, hand on our opponent's biceps or armpits, pushing them away while slowly bringing our hands down to their hips. From here, we press all our weight downward, bringing one knee to the middle of their hips and the other knee angled out. This should put all the pressure to our opponent's ankles, causing them to separate. Once the guard is broken, we are always looking to pass, advance, or submit. I want to stress, pressing your elbows into your opponent's inner thighs before sitting back will help you with leverage and keep you safe from submission. The next guard break is a pinning break. With the pinning break, it's a bit different. We still keep our hands positioned the same, but instead of posturing up, we're tripoding into our opponent. From here, we wedge our elbows into our opponent's thigh, press hard and sit back. This will pry their ankles apart. Now we pass, advance, or submit. Note, after you break the guard, for a higher pass rate, keep pressure on your opponent's leg and pin the side of their knee to the ground. Onto the arm trap. To successfully execute this break, you need to control your opponent's wrist immediately and tripod into them. This will elevate your opponent's hips, allowing you to pass their wrist through to your other hand. From here, we simply wedge our elbow into our opponent's thigh, separating their ankles and breaking their guard. One thing I want to note, to set up wrist control, let your opponent get a grip on your sleeve and wrist pumble. Next is a standing guard break. We start by controlling our opponent's wrist and placing it on top of their stomach. From here, we stand up, stepping up on the side that we control. Once we're on our feet, we posture and pull up our opponent's arm. Now, we can safely unlock our opponent's ankles and proceed to pass. Here's a quick tip. It's easier to step up when you lean your head away from the side you're controlling. Next is a standing guard break. We start from the same position, hands on the opponent's biceps, tripoding in. We narrowly walk up, positioning our knees under our opponent's guard. Now we sit back into a squat to break guard and advance. One thing I want to note, once our knees are set, we can always lunge back instead of sitting into a squat. The main goal being to put all the pressure to our opponent's lower back and guard. Now, in MMA, you're going to have more options to break open the guard, but there are several techniques that do overlap, so we'll start with those first. In split break, everything is the same. We posture up, put downward pressure on hips, angle our knees, sit back and break open the guard. Everything stays the same with the pinning break. We tripod into our opponent, using the elbow on the inner thigh to wedge open the guard. Because strikes are in play, this pass can be a bit safer since your opponent will not have enough space to generate power. The arm trap has the same setup. Control wrist, tripod up, pass arm beneath hips, base back down, and wedge your elbows in to pass. There's a difference in friction now so more downward pressure is required to initially control the wrist. The standing guard pass has the same components. Tripod in, walk up, tuck elbows in, squat or lunge back to break. If we decide to lunge back, make sure we evenly distribute our weight between both feet. The techniques in MMA start to differ because of what is allowed in the rules. The next technique is a prime example, it's called a can opener. The move itself is simple. We clinch our opponent's head, walk all the way up, pull our elbows between our legs and hike their head through. Keep your hips low so when the guard breaks you can easily maintain your position. Now reaping knees and cranks are illegal in BJJ competitions and this technique is considered a neck crank. So it is illegal. One thing that has been peppered into the MMA techniques is punches. This leads me to the last guard break, strikes. One thing is for certain, people don't like to get hit, 
so inside the guard, rain punches and elbows down on your opponent. There are several strikes you can do, but here are the most effective. Hammer strikes to the sternum, elbows to the rib, rolling elbow to the face. Because your opponent will not want to stay under you, they will naturally adjust their hips and open up their guard. And that's some of the guard breaks you'll encounter when training. Just be mindful on the differences between BJJ and MMA. I hope you enjoyed and found this video helpful. If you did, like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Like always, if you have any questions, list them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Coach EJ. Now, now put with the cord. So go ahead and pause, uh, cut that one.